Hello and thank you again for watching my videos. I'm sure most of you already know this, but I always want to point out for the best quality, click on that little cog wheel that says HD and always make sure that the quality is in 1080p HD. A lot of times it'll be in auto, which should automatically put it there, but just in case it isn't, you can obviously scroll up here and click that right there. And that'll give you the best quality of the video that you're watching. Uh, many times if you subscribe and get alert that I've uploaded a video and you watch it, the quality won't be good. It won't be as good yet. It's still in standard definition. Uh, that's because it's still processing. The HD version is still processing. Just wait a few more uh, minutes, hours, and it should upload to HD eventually. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. I think most of you already know this, but like I said, it never hurts to just double check and make sure uh, you're aware of this. And one more little hint that YouTube will give you is you can always play any part of the video in super slow motion or fast forward motion. That's the playback speed. Obviously, I keep it normal right now, but you can, you know, slow down, fast forward any other play or part of the video you want to look at. So I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get to your video. Again, thank you for subscribing and watching. Good afternoon and welcome to Falcon Field in Meriden, Connecticut. It is Saturday afternoon, November 9th, 2024. And we've got college football this afternoon when Beacon Hill travels to take on the Connecticut State Junior College Wildcats, the only junior college in Connecticut, coached by Devine Jackson and assistants Morris Hilton Jr. Shaq Jones and Mike Rudowitz. So if you're watching this game on YouTube, give a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and I'll do my best not to miss any of the action. It's the last regular season game for the Connecticut State Junior College Wildcats. I gotta be honest, I don't know a lot about their opponent. I believe it's Beacon Hill. I'm not sure where they're from. I want to say Richmond, Virginia but maybe I'll have time to check that out and uh, respond during the game if I get an answer. Uh, kickoff at 4 p.m., 4 p.m., that's right around the corner. So, Beacon Hill versus Connecticut State Junior College football, the Wildcats. That game's coming up next. All right, there's the coin toss. Looks like the Wildcats won the toss. They look to defer to the second half. Wildcats will be kicking off to Beacon Hill to start the game. The Beacon Hill Cardinals will receive the opening kickoff.
No, that was New London County Silverbacks. This team is out of Richmond, Virginia. All right, according to the roster that was handed to me from the coach, this is T Tally Gallagher. Tally Gallagher set the kickoff for the Wildcats. Here we go, we are underway. It's a short kick. Okay, so Beacon Hill, they are the Cardinals. And they come they travel from Richmond, Virginia. This is a long travel, long way to travel. Richmond, Virginia. They come in. Well, I'm not sure what their record is. I, I tried to ask, I asked one of the players, he seemed a little confused. I asked one of the coaches, he had to think about it. So I think the players said they're one and one. One of the coaches said they're two and two. So I guess. The common denominator is they have a 500 record, either one and one, two and two, something like that. They haven't played a lot of games. They, I'm told, they told me they had a lot of forfeits, a lot of forfeits on their schedule. So glad that uh, they could travel all the way from Richmond, Virginia, to play this game. Here we go. First play from scrimmage for the Beacon Hill Cardinals. The Connecticut State Wildcats coming off a victory, a 28-2 victory last week over a, a semi-professional team, the New London County Silverbacks. They beat Sacred Heart Club Pioneers this year. The Wildcats lost to the Western Connecticut State Wolves JV team this year. Quarterback for the Cardinals throws it away at the last minute. Heavy pressure from the Wildcats defense. Brings up third and about nine. And I don't have a roster for the Beacon Hill Cardinals either. I tried asking one of the coaches. In fact, this coach right here, I can get the focus to come in. There we go. Very nice gentleman. Uh, Sucking to him before the game. And he said they kind of go with a quarterback guy by committee. Uh, he did not have a printed roster for me, so unfortunately I will not have any names. I couldn't even find a roster online, to be honest with you, for Beacon Hill. Pretty good run right there. Maybe about a yard or two short of the first down though. I mean, even when I looked up Beacon Hill on the website, it says their record is 0-0. There's no record of any games being played. There's no roster to name of. So it was very hard to, my only 
knowledge of information was talking to that coach before the game. Team out called by the Cardinals. Somebody jumped for the Wildcats. Watch the ball. Offside or encroachment by the Wildcats. That'll be an automatic first down for Beacon Hill. There's a flag down. Holding on the offense. So they'll back him up. It'll be first and 20, I believe. All right, so it's holding on the offense. The penalties declined. So instead of it being first and 20, it'll be second and 10. They'll accept the play, the incomplete pass. That's not where the ball was at. If they're declining the penalty, it should be for when they're spotted a foul. It's a down count. No, they had, a, they had an offside before that, though. Usually it's at the spot. No, that... It was declined. The penalty was declined, you guys. And, and there was an offside before that, so the, the, pla the placement's right. Yeah, because it's first down. Let's go, defense! All right, it's third and ten from the 44-yard line. I try, I don't know, I try not to get too involved with the crowd and everything, but I just had to try to correct correct the crowd what they were thinking and saying. Timeout called by the Cardinals again. It's, I think that's two timeouts already called by Beacon Hill. Heavy pressure, he has to throw it away. It'll be up fourth and ten. Go. Nice job, boys. All 
All right, so Beacon Hill Cardinals are back to punt. Again, Beacon Hill is the red and black. And the Connecticut State Wildcats are the the tan and white. Penalty on the Cardinals. And Beacon Hill Cardinals are again traveled coming out of Richmond, Virginia, all the way to Connecticut. Takes a Beacon Hill balance at about the 22 yard line of the Wildcats where they'll take over. Connecticut State Wildcats take over first and 10. For the first time on offense, we'll take a look at the Junior College Wildcats. Looks like Jansen, is that Jansen Booth at quarterback? No, Connor Schifferit. It's a handoff to CJ Wimbley. No, Jansen Booth. Jansen Booth is uh, getting the start at quarterback here for the Wildcats. Oh, it's right the first time. Jansen Booth at a Hartford Public, the former Hartford Public Owl, with C.J. Wimbley in the backfield. Oh, it's almost. A, it might be a face mask. Nice run by C.J. Wimbley. All the way to midfield. <laughs> no, they didn't call the face mask. It looked like his. I don't know if it, he may have just kind of like swiped it and not grabbed it. Or the official just didn't see it. <laughs> So no penalty, it'll be a first and 10 for the Wildcats right at midfield. We almost had trouble with the exchange and CJ Wimbley takes it to about a five yard gain to the 45. It'll be second and five. They spot the ball at the 46-yard line, so a four-yard gain. It'll be second and six for the Wildcats. <laughs> Jansen Booth. Quick pass. That's enough for a first down. First and ten. Wildcats from the 39 yard line. Number two made the catch is David DeLeon. DeLeon had a touchdown catch last week for the Wildcats against the semi pro Silverbacks out of New London County. Here's a handoff, picks up a few yards. Stay on your guy! Uh, C.J. Wembley. Picks up four yards. It'll be second and six from the well, uh, Cardinals 35-yard line. That was a good look at the defensive line right there for the Cardinals. Hand off to C.J. Wimbley again. Picks up about four more yards. It'll be third and about two.
Let's go, offense! Hand off to C.J. Wembley, and he's going to get stopped for a loss. Big tackle for a loss by number 10 from the Beacon Hill Cardinals. Run off tackle, run off tackle. It brings up fourth down in about six. Loss of about four yards in the play. Three, maybe three yards. Wildcats are going for it on fourth down. Jansen Booth is going long. It's caught as he inbounds. They're going to call it a catch. Number 14 on the roster says Owen Poilo. Owen Poilo with the catch. Jansen Booth is going his direction again. And it's caught for a touchdown, 15 yards. Number 10. I'll try to get a name in just a second. Number 10, the roster says Robert Dunkley. Robert Dunkley out of Hartford, Connecticut, played for Bloomfield. Two point conversion attempt. Jansen Booth looking, and he's got it. Wildcats march down the field and score on their opening possession. That was a two point conversion pass to David DeLeon. De Leon from Jansen Booth. So touchdown Jansen Booth, 15 yards to Robert Dunkley. And the two-point conversion pass to David De Leon in the Wildcats lead. 8-0. Looks like we got a new kicker this time for the Wildcats. I think it is. It's another short kick. He's going to the sideline, number five. Nice return. False start on the offense. 
They'll back him up five yards, first and 15. Handoff maybe, maybe gets a yard at best. Quarterback scrambles and maybe picks up another yard. It'll be third and eight from the 40. Actually, it's third and 13. I thought they had it at the 38 yard line. How did it get to the... I don't know. That's interesting. All right, either way, I guess uh, don't listen to what I'm saying. It's third and 13, apparently, at the 40 yard line. I guess they did have the 43 yard line. Okay, never mind. It's third and 13. Okay. It's a low snap picked up by the quarterback. Nice save. Oh, yeah. and he throws it away. It'll bring him fourth and 13. That's a high kick going almost nowhere. <laughs> Cardinals punch it forward. <laughs> so where was the ball at the 30? 40 yard line, it was about a net net yard of about eight yards, eight yard punt to the Cardinals 48 yard line. It'll be first and 10 Wildcats. Looks like Jack Harris is in the backfield now. And it's a little jet sweep. Breaks a tackle and it's pushed out of bounds. Number 16. I've got to ask who number 16 is because I can't find that number on the roster. Go 
to swing pass to David De Leon. We have third and short. Jansen Booth is back to pass. Breaks one tackle and another, and he has to kind of throw it away. Or did he complete it? And I'm gonna say, they are gonna say it's completion. Well, I thought he was gonna throw it away, but he actually completes the pass to number 17. Great job by Jansen Booth, and a nice catch by 17. It's a fist bump from one of the coaches, Morris Hilton Jr. Number 17 says Dante Torres at a, at a plat. Second down for the Wildcats. Let's see if they try to run one more play before the end of the first quarter. Doesn't look like they're in a hurry to do that. So that will take us to the end of the first quarter. Connecticut State Wildcats, the only junior college program in Connecticut. Eight. Beacon Hill Cardinals, zero. We'll take a break, show you the graphic, and then come back and start the second quarter. All right, so I have a few corrections I have to make in a moment here. Jansen Booth looking for number 16. Uh, 17 earlier I said was Dante Torres, I believe. It's Trevon Ortiz. I believe number 17 who made a catch earlier is Trevon Ortiz. And number 16, who had the past moments ago is Dante Torres. Wildcats going for it on fourth down. Jansen Booth with the pass, and again he's going deep. He's got an open receiver, another long touchdown pass from Jansen Booth. To David DeLeon. And that was on fourth down. Fourth down touchdown pass from Jansen Booth to David DeLeon. Wildcats lead 14-0 with the conversion coming up. The flag down is Jansen Booth runs him in for two points. But it's going to be coming back. Holding on the offense.
redo the two-point conversion there's movement they're gonna call a false start on the offense they'll back him up five more yards and again replay the two-point conversion from further back all right so they're moving them back a total of eight uh, 15 yards so far so it'll be a two-point conversion from the 18 yard line Jensen Booth's got all day, all day, and it's knocked down by the defense. So the two-point conversion is no good. The Wildcats lead 14 to nothing early second quarter. There's a squib kick. Return by number 14. A lot of pushing and shoving at the end of the play. Picking up the flag, I guess there was a flag down, but they're picking it up, waving it off. Looks like the Wildcats, they seem to think they have it. And they do. Wildcats ball after the turnover. Jansen Booth handoff to CJ Wembley. Jansen Booth is going to keep it all. Oh. Puts his head down and takes a big knock. I don't know if that's what you want your quarterback to do. There's a player down for the Cardinals. Hey, hey, 
All right, as a 10 to the injured player, we're going to take a timeout. Okay, back to action. Third and short for the Wildcats. Hand off to CJ Wembley. Looks like an official threw a flag and just picked it up. I don't know if it's gonna. Yeah, there is a flag down, so let's see what the penalty is. Holding on the offense, so it's coming back. The run, number three. So they'll move it back and replay third down. Let's go, Wildcats! Nice pass and catch. Are they saying incomplete? I don't know. It looked good from here. Apparently they say it's, he was out of bounds. Yeah. I got some video. It looked good from here. Now it's fourth down and about five. And again, the Wildcats going for it. They've had a lot of success on fourth down in this game so far. Jason Booth eludes to the pressure. Again, he's going deep. And it's going to be knocked away by number 20. Good defense for the Beacon Hill Cardinals, number 20. It'll be a turn. Turnover on downs. <laughs> It'll be a turnover on downs. Uh, Beacon Hill Cardinals take over first and ten. Pass is overthrown, incomplete, second and ten coming up.
Third and five for the Cardinals. Tackle for a loss in the backfield at number 54. That's according to the roster. It's it's Reynold Erosini. I'm if I'm I'm probably saying that way wrong, and I apologize. Reynold Erosini, Erosine, out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Big tackle for a loss. Um, it's fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. The Cardinals are going for it, trailing 14 nothing in the second quarter. My battery is flashing, so I've got to get this play in and change my camera battery afterward. And heavy pressure, and down goes the quarterback. Oh, the ball's loose. I didn't notice it till the end. The ball's loose, and it's picked up and recovered. It would have been a turnover on downs anyway by Erosini. Reynold Erosini. Again, I'm probably saying his name so wrong, and I apologize if I mispronounce or get a name wrong. But he's out of Springfield, and uh, Wildcats take over in good field position. I got to take a timeout. The clock is still running. I got to take a timeout and uh, change my camera battery. Fake handoff. Quarterback's going to keep it. Jansen Booth. Jansen Booth back to pass, looking to for the end zone. Oh, just overthrown. Looking for Dante Torres, I think. Don, Dante Torres. Jansen Booth finds a wide open receiver. It's about a 24 yard gain. Twenty-four-yard pass and catch to David Daly on, and it looks like a flag is down. There's a lot of pushing and shoving at the end of the play. Might be unsportsmanlike or a personal foul. And there's more pushing and shoving going on. All right, officials are going to call both coaches together, try to keep it together. You're going to try to restore order. And the last thing you want to see is any ejections or any fighting or anything like that happen. Just let him play, last worry. 
Uh, I don't know if they're going to actually make any calls, any penalties. Perhaps they just picked up the flags and gave each team a warning. Alright, so maybe Maybe they they just gave the both teams a warning, and uh, you know, the last thing the last thing you want to have happen are the officials to walk off the field, unable to control the situation. Looks like the Wildcats are first and ten. For, I'm sorry, first and goal. First and goal at the, the two yard line. Looks like it got Delton Rogers Jr. in the backfield. And they give it to Delton Rogers. Delton Rogers Jr. Two yard touchdown run for the Connecticut State Junior College Wildcats. Two yard run by Delton Rogers Jr., the semi pro football veteran.
give us a Dalton Rogers Jr. again. He hurdles, he hurdles over the defender into the end zone for the two point conversion. Looking like Saquon Barkley out there hurtling over the defender. Delton Rogers Jr. gets the touchdown and the two point conversion. And the JUCO Connecticut State Wildcats lead 22 to nothing, second quarter. Let's hope he's all right. He looks like he's leaning into one side. Hope he's not injured. Hopefully he's going to be all right. His shoulder got injured at the... So hopefully Delton Rogers Jr. will be all right. Heavy pressure on the quarterback and he throws it incomplete. Second and ten for the Cardinals. Roster says it's ta uh, Tally Gallagher. Tally Gallagher making the defensive play for the Wildcats out of Windsor, out of Windsor, Connecticut. Nothing doing for the Cardinals. Number 10 is stocked at the line. Third down. Delay a game on the offense. Handoff goes nowhere for the Beacon Hill Cardinals. They'll bring up fourth down and long. Go, 
Cardinals going for it on fourth and long. Airing it out. And it's intercepted. And number four. The roster says number four is Keeland Hubbard. Keeland Hubbard out of Springfield, Massachusetts. So Keeland Hubbard with the interception for the Wildcats. Jansen Booth is back to pass. Just overthrown. That was almost intercepted. Handoff. Oh, that's a monster hit out of bounds. And he bounces right back up like nothing happened. That was Giovanni Vasquez out of Newtown, Newtown, Connecticut. Giovanni Vasquez, according to the roster. Not sure what the whistle is all about. <laughs> A timeout called by the Wildcats, it looks like. With five seconds left, looks like it's time for one more play. All right, so the Beacon Hill Cardinals, it looks like they'll play everybody back. Well, almost everybody. Not really. I don't know. Connecticut State Wildcats will try to hit a Mary from the 50-yard line. Jansen Booth going to air it out deep. And it's knocked away by number six. Intended for David DeLeon. Cardinals talking a lot of, doing a lot of talking back there. Uh, and that takes us to halftime. Connecticut State Junior College Wildcats 22, Beacon Hill Cardinals 0. We'll take a break, show you the graphic, and come back and start the second half, third quarter.
All right, I got some clarification at halftime from head coach Divine Jackson and some fixes I've got to make if I can find the players now. Number 10. Number 10 who had the touchdown in the first half is not Robert Dunkley. It is Trey Jones. Number 10 is Trey Jones. My apologies. Uh, the roster is incorrect or they changed the jersey up. And also I'm looking for number 54. If I can find 54 who had a big tackle and I believe a fumble recovery. Number 54 is Albert Rotundo. I don't know if I can, I don't know where he is here. Albert Rotundo, if you see number 54, is not the name that I had trouble pronouncing earlier. There's Jay Knighton, number 56. Jay Knighton talking to assistant coaches, uh, Mike Rudowitz, and I think Shaq Jones. There's 54. Okay, 54 is um, Albert Rotundo. Is that what I said? Albert Rotundo. Uh, so that's the clarifications. Albert Rotundo, number 54, not the other name I said that I probably butchered. And number 10 is Trey Jones. Number 10 is Trey Jones, not Robert Dunkley. There's your clarifications. Again, if I miss any names, mispronounced names, my apologies, but just gotta get that cleared up for those two players at least. So thank you. Okay, it looks like we're just about ready to kick off and start the second half, third quarter. The Connecticut State Junior College Wildcats lead 22-0 over Beacon Hill Cardinals out of Richmond, Virginia. All right, Beacon Hill will be kicking off to the Wildcats. And the big question is, whether or not we'll get this game finished without any kind of fights. Or hopefully the game won't end early. Here we go, so the second half. It's an onside kick attempt. It's going to roll out of bounds. That should be a penalty. Quick pass that's going to actually lose yards. And that was caught by Trey Jones, who I just made the correction about the, earlier. There's a flag down as Jansen Booth keeps it. What the heck is going on here? 
offside or encroachment. Looks like there's going to be the call on the defense. It is encroachment. Encroachment on the defense. They're going to accept the penalty. It will be first down and five from the 40-yard line. Well, he just said second down. So maybe it was declined. Oh, no. It would be second down. Sorry. We play second down. First play with like lost yards. I totally forgot that they already ran a play. Looks like second and eight from the 43 yard line. Another flag is down. And Jansen Booth might be a free play. Falls incomplete. I believe that's Trevon Ortiz, the intended target. It looks like encroachment again on the defense. So they move them up five more yards and replay second down. Alright, second down and two from the 38 yard line. Oh, pass falls incomplete, going for the home run. Looking for Owen Puelo. Third and short. Jansen Booth back to pass. There's no pressure at all. He's got lots of time. Now he chooses to run with it. He's got a lot of room in front of him. He rolls, runs over the defender. Just barrels over the defender. Jansen Booth taking no prisoners with him. Big run. That should be a, that's a first down and a heck of a lot more. And that time the Cardinals didn't fall for it and Jansen Booth gets stood up and lost yards. Second and 13 from the 21, 20 yard line. The ball's loose. And Jansen Booth just falls on it, bring up third down and long. Lost the five yards, it'll be third and uh, let's see. It's like third about 16. Maybe maybe 17. Third and 17 we'll call it. There is Coach Matt Tomczewski holding the down marker. The coach for the, one of the coaches for the New England Golden Lions. Over the middle, it's intercepted. And this could go a long way. He's got some real estate in front of him. But he's gonna run out of bounds. 
And here comes the chatter. Actually showing some good sportsmanship here from the Wildcats. almost intercepted and then it was almost tipped and caught get back, get back. it's gonna be an incomplete second and ten coming up Here's another good look at head coach Matt Tomcheski volunteering his time to run the chains and the down marker for coach Devine Jackson in the Connecticut State Wildcats. The trainer has just been called over to the Beacon Hill sidelines. Falls incomplete and then he takes a big hit. He does a Shawn Michaels uh, picks himself up like Shawn Michaels. Kickflip. Big hit though by number 23 of the Wildcats. Now brings up fourth down for the Cardinals. I believe it's Cedric Strickland who had that big hit after the incomplete pass. Cedric Strickland. He had an interception, I think he had an interception last week. Yeah, the ball's loose on fourth down, it's gonna be a turnover. A turnover on downs, the Wildcats will take over in great field position.
Jansen Booth. He's going to get tackled out of bounds about a yard or two short of the first down. Apparently there was a flag down, but they're picking it up and waving it off. No flag. No penalty. That's Jacaris on the carry. And Jansen Booth, touchdown to Trey Jones. Not Robert Dunkley, it's Trey Jones. Thank you for the correction earlier, Divine Jackson. That's touchdown number two in the game for Trey Jones. There's <clears throat> Jacaris Cole, number eight in the backfield out of Waterbury Career Academy. And Jansen Booth is going to pass it, and Seaver falls down. And it's going to be ruled incomplete. Looking for David DeLeon. And the score is the Wildcats leading now 28 to nothing. After Jansen Booth touchdown pass to Trey Jones, don't call me Robert Dunkley, Trey Jones. I don't know if it was an onside kick, a successful onside kick or not. Let me see. Looks like someone is down on the ground for the Cardinals. He took a big hit as he was trying to get the ball.
that's a good sign seeing him get up. But he looks like he's in pretty bad shape. Let's hope he's going to be all right. They just call a game? Well, I guess I guess I guess they called the game. Okay, I guess they called the game with just over two minutes left in the third quarter and no fourth quarter. Uh, the final score, the Connecticut State Junior College Wildcats 28, Beacon Hill Cardinals out of Rich Richmond, Virginia, zero. And no more guys. Okay, they just turned the scoreboard off. That'll do it for me from Falcon Field in Meriden, Connecticut on Saturday night, November 9th, 2024. Uh, they call the game early. The game ends with about two minutes and change left in the third quarter. They don't play the fourth quarter, of course. Uh, well, Connecticut State Junior, I guess they ran out of players, really. The Beacon Hill Cardinals kind of ran out of players due to injury. Uh, the final score, Connecticut State Wildcats 28, Beacon Hill Cardinals 0. If you watch this game on YouTube, give a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And thank you once again for watching. Have a great rest of your evening, and please get home safe.